Hey church, it's Friday and we're here again continuing with our message of who is Jesus and looking at his I am statements. Today we're going to look at John 14 6 where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It was the week of Jesus' death on the cross. He had just washed his disciples' feet and told them that he would be betrayed by one of them. He told them that he was going to be, die on the cross and that he was going to rise again. He said that he was going to leave them and where he was going, they couldn't go with him. And because of this, the disciples are upset. They're bothered. They don't know. They don't understand. They don't know what's going on. And they don't want Jesus to leave them. So Jesus responds to them with these encouraging words in John 14. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. Jesus is encouraging his disciples that although he is leaving, he is leaving to go prepare a place for them in his father's house. Unlike the disciples, we understand that Jesus is referring to heaven. The comfort of these verses is in verse 3, where he says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. Two words of encouragement here. First, he's coming back for his disciples. He's not going to leave them alone, but he's going to come back and get them. Yes, I'm leaving now, but I'm going to come back so that where I am, you can also be. When is Jesus coming back? I mean, he said this 2,000 years ago. We don't know. Um, He says he's going to come like a thief in the night. So we need to be watching and waiting because Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day closer today than he was yesterday. And I believe if we look at the signs of the times, Jesus is coming soon. And the second word of encouragement is that he says that I'm coming to take you with me so that where I am, you may also be. The most amazing thing about heaven, we can read lots of great things about heaven in the Bible. Um, He just described it here. I go to prepare a mansion for you. It's also called a dwelling place. But he's going to prepare a place where we can live. You know, the Bible describes heaven as a place where the streets are made of gold. I mean, is that literal? Is that symbolic? I don't know, but that sounds pretty amazing. Um, Gold, something precious here, there. It's just like uh, concrete. Not a big deal. He describes that in heaven there will be uh, uh, there'll be no more tears, there'll be no more sickness, there'll be no more death because all of those things have passed away. But the greatest thing about heaven, greater than all of that, is that we will be where he is. We will spend an eternity in his presence. Jesus continues in verse 4, John 14, verse 4, and he says, And where I go you know, and you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. If you'd known me, you would have known my Father. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Thomas speaks up probably what all the other disciples were thinking. Um, We don't know where you're going. So how can we know how to get there? Jesus responds, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. In reality, we have here three I am statements, not one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But let's first look at the way. Jesus says, I am the way. The way to what? Well, he responds at the end and says, no one can come to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the way to the Father or Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus here is claiming that he is the only way to God. Through faith in him, our sins can be forgiven and we can have eternal life. How can he be the only way? What about our good works? What about the religions of the world? Well, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. It also teaches that the wage of sin is death, hell. 
So no one can make it to heaven on their own. And no other religion offers forgiveness of sins like Jesus. It says in the book of Acts chapter 4, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven among by which men must be saved. No other name. There's no other way. It says in Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his love towards us. And that why we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the good news. Jesus is the way. There's no other way. He's the way because when we were sinners, when we were lost in the world, we were dead to God. We had no way of knowing God. It says that Jesus died for us. He died on the sin, on the cross to pay for our sins. Jesus says this in Matthew 17. He says, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, but narrow is the gate and difficult the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Jesus is the way that leads to life. He's the only way. And although there may not be many who are entering in through him, he is the only way. All other ways lead to death. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. We're saved by faith and trusting in the only Son of God. So my question for you today is, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Through faith in him, your sins will be forgiven. You will be saved from God's wrath and from hell. And you will be on the path or the way. You'll be entering in through the gate of life. The gate, the way unto the Father. The Bible says that all who believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you accepted him? Have you given your life to him? Do you believe in him? The Bible says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord and believes in their heart that God rose him from the dead will be saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are the way, the only way. Thank you, Lord, that we are not good enough because we can't earn our way into heaven. Lord, because we've sinned against you. And it's not about earning our way. It's about trusting in you as the only way, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, the, the way that leads to life, eternal life, forgiveness of sins. And Lord, I pray for everybody watching. I pray that they will have accepted you as their Lord and Savior. I pray that they would have given their life to you, Lord, and they would walk in a newness of life. They would walk in obedience to your word. They'd walk being led by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you and thank you, Lord, for being our God and our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. If you need prayer, if you would like, if you had prayed to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, send us a comment, let us know so we can be praying for you. God bless you.